So how long have you been an exotic pedal user? Wow. I've been an exotic pedal user probably th close to 13 years. Uh, started out with the RC Boost and the AC Boost. And we kind of, you know, I, they grew and I kind of grew with them, both uh, musically and unfortunately physically. But that's a whole other story. That's another show right, for another right. time. But yeah, I've been with them about 13 years. Okay. Yeah. So you've been there pretty much in the beginning because the company's about 15 years old. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much was from the uh, from the beginning. Yeah, no, um... Just you use a lot of products. And yes. Yeah, you're obviously big in studio and um, touring and and record production. Uh, do you, can you think of anything off the top of your head that sets exotic pedals uh, apart from, say, you know, the other brands on the market? Uh, yeah. One of the things I think that sets exotic pedals apart is their commitment to quality. And they really listen to input from players. Like I know they have some signature stuff from Scott Henderson. They have some really, really interesting bass pedals. And um, for instance, the, the Robotalk reissue, you know, which has some of the features that the original uh, Maestro filter sample hold has. You got filter on one side, you have sample and hold, hold on the other. So I think one of the things that sets Exotic apart is they really take a lot of input from players and take input from the street and say, okay, guys, we need to make this because this this would work well. For instance, um, the, the wah pedal, the, the XW1, one of the cool things about it is the size of the pedal. Mm -hmm. Because if you have a pedal board, you can't have things that take up a whole lot of space. So the size of the pedal is a little smaller than some wah pedals, so it doesn't take up as much real estate on a pedal board. And that, that's direct input from what guys are out using uh, on a daily basis. Right, right. So you're here today, um um, uh, uh, demoing out the XW1. Yes. Wah. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously you've probably used other WAs before this one. Um, what is some of the characteristics of the XW1 that you like that right off the bat you're like, this is better than, you know, say, you know, some other brand? Well, some of the things I like about the XW1 Wawa are the ability to change the tone. There have been a lot of times when uh, I've been on a session and the producer won't say, hey, can you add more highs or can you, you know, he'll just say, hey, I don't really like the sound of that wah-wah. Can you change it? And sometimes I'll have another wah-wah and there's some wah-wahs where you can adjust, adjust some things. The, the XW1 has a lot of adjustments. You got the bias control, you have the Q control to make it narrower or wider. The bias control can sort of be you can sort of say it's a depth control, if you will, and you have bass and treble. Sometimes I roll bass out because sometimes when you're, uh, depending on the sound, and you go back on the wah-wah, sometimes it can be a little bass heavy. Mm -hmm. But with the XW1, you can roll some out. So it's very versatile from that standpoint. And then if you go inside the pedal, it's got an input gain control and some more dip switches to, to further uh, mess with the sound. Mm -hmm. You know, some guys have hot pickups, some have, you know, some guys have really, uh, you know, PAF style, uh, humbuckers or or single coils that don't have a lot of output but have a lot of great tone so you can go in and and crank the input gain so you hit the wah wah a little bit harder right. so those are some of the things i like about the xw1 right and we mentioned the size you mentioned the size of it earlier it's a little bit smaller that doesn't you know um you can't tell the difference after a while or? no it's it's actually good for me i you know i don't have really massive feet so for me the size is perfect and, you know, for the average guy, I mean, even if you wear like, you know, size 10, 11 shoe, you know, you're not going to find yourself missing the wah pedal. It's, 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 it's solid and, uh, and really easy to, to operate. So, no, the size of the wah is perfect. Right, right. And um, one of the things that uh, usually happens with wahs is the switch brakes or the, the, the wah pot inside their brakes. Um, have you noticed, like, throughout your years of touring and stuff that you've gone through wahs before? They break on you? Well... Yeah, over the years, I've gone through a lot of Wawa's. Um, sometimes they just plain wear out, and, you know, that's, that's, that happens. But like you said, sometimes on Wawa's, it's the switch. Sometimes it's the pot. Sometimes it's the pot and the switch. Right. And, you know, we're guitar players. Generally, we don't send stuff back to get it fixed. We throw it away and we buy another one. That's, yeah. that's what we do, yeah. you know. So the cool thing about the uh, XW1, or one of the cool things, is that the switch is attached to a relay. So... The on-off switch is not the thing, and apparently it's good for, what, like a million ons and offs? So, yeah. you know, you'll be hard-pressed to turn your Wawa on and off a million times. But, um, you know, so it's attached to a relay. There are no pops, no clicks, because there's no 
uh, there's no uh, voltage going through the switch. So you don't get pops and clicks. And then in terms of the pot, there's no noise. And in the demo, I was going back and forth, back and forth. There's no noise coming out of the wah-wah. And you know, you and I know both as guitar players that you turn on a wah-wah, you're gonna get some shh, yeah. shh, shh. And that's, that's part of the thing. It's like, oh yeah, that's just the wah-wah. Yeah. But with the XW1, you don't get it. So that's, that's a very cool feature. So quality construction is something that's important to you. Yeah, I mean, you know, and, and, and the XW1 costs a little more, but I'd rather spend a little more now and not buy, in the next five years, buy five Wawa pedals. Right, right. You know, so, you you know, yeah, I, it's it works for me awesome. very, very well. Awesome. So tell us about um, any new projects you have coming up uh, with your band or any tours or anything. Oh, wow. Yeah, I have a brand new project coming out for myself, a CD that we're going to release uh, the early part of, of next year. Uh, which will be 2016. Uh, it's called Stories from Stomp and Willie. And Stomp and Willie is a nickname given to me by George Duke uh, over the years. And I did some of his songs as a tribute to him. But I uh, got a lot of great guys on there like Tom Scott and Jeff Lorber and, and a lot of folks, Patrice Russian, some of the guys from the Tonight Show band like Ricky Minor, Wayne Lindsay, Kevin Ricard, Teddy Campbell, uh, John Beasley. So uh, got some good folks on there. Did some writing with, uh, with Brian Culbertson and and like I said, Jeff, um, got Gary Novak on drums and some tunes. So really, really excited about the project. And that comes out in February two. Comes out in February 2016, yeah. And where can people uh, go to find out information on you or the record? Oh, very, very easy. Uh, my website, uh, pauljacksonjr.com. My Facebook page, you know, uh, under my name, Paul Jackson Jr., will be able to buy the record. All the usual, usual places. Uh, used to say record stores, but none of those yeah, anymore. So right. iTunes, Amazon. And uh, all the normal outlets for the CD. So don't forget stories from Stomp and Willie, Paul Jackson Jr. So that that's a new project. All right. Well, thank yeah. you, Paul, for helping us. Johnny, out thank you. All righty. Yeah.